Today I will be showing you how to make a 12 volt nominal lithium iron phosphate battery. First step, you have to top balance it. Actually, the first step is you gotta buy your stuff. So first let's talk about what you're gonna need as far as cells, BMSs, tools, etc. Because that really is the first step. So you're gonna need a battery charger. I got this one on Amazon. It's pretty common, about 50 bucks. You're gonna need four lithium iron phosphate 3.2 volt cells. You're gonna to wanna to get four that are the same capacity. These are all 200 amp hours. You gotta have them the same capacity. You can get them directly from China if you're adventurous. If you're not adventurous, you can get them on Amazon. If you get them directly from China, they are considerably cheaper. So you need four of them because we're gonna be doing a 4S 12.8 volt nominal lithium iron phosphate battery. The next thing you're gonna need is a BMS. This is the unit that will control everything about your battery. It'll control the power coming in, the power coming out, it'll shut it down if it's too hot, if it's too cold. This is the brain of the battery. You need this for sure. So this is a JBD BMS. You can get this directly from China as well. You're also gonna need additional bus bars. These are bus bars. When you buy your cells, it's gonna come with some bus bars, but not enough to top balance them because you're gonna to need to put them in parallel to top balance. So you're gonna to need to buy additional bus bars. If you don't wanna buy them and you're crafty, you can actually make them. You can make them out of copper pipe. You can just make them out of copper like this, but you're gonna need that. And of course, you're gonna need additional you know, nuts. You're gonna need a voltmeter. You probably already have a voltmeter, but you will need this to test. You definitely need a voltmeter. Another thing you're gonna need is a pair of wire snips. It's best to get one that has a, an ability to crimp. And we'll get to crimping in a second. These are very common. I got these at Harbor Freight. You probably already own this and this. As far as tools, that's really all you're gonna need. You're gonna need captain tape. Now you may not have captain tape. You can get this again from Amazon. It's not that expensive but you're gonna to need to get yourself some of this. It's really cool. It's a good thing to have if you're in electronics anyway. You're gonna need either some double-sided tape or some sort of construction adhesive, and I'll get into where that comes in in a little bit when we're building it. You're also gonna need some of these connectors, and that's because, back to our BMS, you can see it already has these connectors, but it doesn't come with the connectors, so you're gonna to have to put those on. So this is optional, but you may need some wire because back to the BMS, you can buy a BMS like this, which does not have the wires, or you can buy a BMS that comes with the wires. So that's your choice. So that is an optional thing that you're going to need. So one more tool that I forgot to mention was you will need a heat gun because when you're making your connectors, these need to be, um, you need to apply a heat gun to them so they shrink around your wire to keep it nice and tight. So those are the things that you're going to need and I will show you how to wire it all together. It just takes a few minutes to wire it together. But back to top balancing, the first step to build it is of course to top balance it. And what do I mean by top balance? Well you're going to put it all the same so you have positive, 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 positive and of course negative, 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 negative. You want to hook it up to a battery charger and you're going to want to charge it up to 3.5 or to 3.6. When it gets full like that, turn it off, let it sit for about a day and then come back, turn your charger back on. It'll probably be at like one or two amps or something. It'll quickly go down, back down to zero, then turn it off. Let them sit for a day. This takes a couple of days. You want to top balance them completely. So let them, let them top balance, let them take their time. You want these all to be as close as they can possibly get. So do that for a couple of days. The longer you do it, the better it's gonna be. So we're pretty much done. There's just a trickle of juice coming in here. I've been top balancing this for several days now. Um, I think we're ready. So I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna take these off. And now I'm gonna turn it into a series. Right now it's in parallel, which means all the positives are together and all the negatives are together. To build the battery, we actually have to remove these bus bars 
flip out, flip over, flip every other battery. That'll set it up so we can wire it in series. So that's what I'm going to do now. So now we're just going to flip every other one. So now we have positive, negative, positive, negative. And that's how we're going to wire them. So we're going to put the bus bars back on like this. So now they're in series. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this captain tape on just to make the, all the batteries kind of into one unit. But while we're here, I want to talk about a couple of things that you may hear, especially if you watch other videos on how to make a battery. So a couple things we're going to talk about. First is compression. And you're going to hear that, you may hear that now and then. Compression is you mechanically, you've added a mechanical device and you actually hold the battery cells together. And I've done it before. Uh, it's actually recommended. The uh, idea behind it is that when these batteries fill up with energy, they actually get a little bit bigger. And if you keep them compressed, you'll extend the life. I've done it. Um, I'm not going to do it on this build. Uh, I would suggest you look into compression to see if it is something you want to incorporate. But I'm not going to be doing it on this build. The second thing is, is these batteries are touching each other. There's some different schools of thought on that. Some like to have a space between them. Some like to put a membrane between them. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to keep these together. It's really important if you're going to be building a battery that's going to be in a portable scenario. For example, if you're building a battery for an RV and it's going to be constantly be jostled around, these batteries can actually, the cells can actually rub and uh, wear through and short out. So if you're going to be putting them in an RV or somewhere that's going to be bouncing around a lot, I would definitely suggest you look into putting some sort of membrane or something that will keep them from rubbing. These are going to be stationary, so it's not a big deal for me. So those are two things to consider that I'm not going to be doing. The next step for me is I'm going to be gluing my BMS on the side here. And again, some people put a membrane between this and this just so there's not any uh, heat transfer from the battery to the to the BMS, from the BMS to the battery. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that. Um, and you're going to fix this anyway. I've seen people uh, tape it on, um, use a double-sided tape, uh, use zip ties. Uh, you don't even have to mount it to the battery. You can put it in a bigger box and you can mount it to the side of the box. There's a thousand different ways to mount the BMS. The biggest thing to remember is you got to put your BMS somewhere where your connector, your wire, will reach your negative. That's really the biggest consideration is they have to be able to reach. So I'm going to just glue mine on with construction adhesive. I've been doing that lately and I really like it. So I just glue it on. I just clamp it and then the next day it's pretty tight. So that is what I'm going to be doing. But feel free to experiment, watch different videos, see how different people do it. There's pluses and minuses to every different way of doing it. Uh, I've been doing this recently and I really like it. Whatever works. You know, and watch other videos. See what other people do and see what works for... Which, what other ideas work the best. But this is all I'm going to do. It's just going to set up. And then I'll come back in a day or so when this adhesive is set up. So my BMS has been attached to the cell, so we're ready to wire up the harness. But before we wire up the harness, and this is the harness we're going to be wiring, I'm going to remind you that this wiring harness does not come with these connectors. You're going to have to buy the connectors because the wiring harness, and here's a wiring harness from another BMS, the wiring harness is going to come like this. So you're going to have to cut these back. 
put this on, crimp it, and that's where your heat gun will come in because you're going to want to actually apply some heat so they shrink around that. So you're going to have to do that first. I've already done that. So we're going to wire the harness. Another thing to remember is don't hook your wiring harness up first. We're going to hook these up, then we're going to plug it in. So now we're going to take our harness and we're going to take the first wire, the black one. Remember, the only black one. We're going to put it on our first terminal here. This is our negative terminal. This will be our new negative terminal. Now I'm going to tighten this down hand tight just because we're going to test this in a few minutes. But these are going to go right here. So we're going to do that in a little bit. So we're going to take the next white wire, which is right next to the black. And that's going to go on the first positive, the same cell as your negative. I'm going to hand tighten these and tighten that down too. So let's grab the next wire. We're going to put that on the first positive. Just making them snug for now. Take the next wire, and you guessed it, it goes here. And then the final one, the red one, which is right here, will go on our final positive. And this is going to be the new positive. So now we're going to test the wiring harness. So I got my multimeter. I'm going to take my negative lead and I'll put it on this first one right here, the black one. Then I'm going to take the red one, the positive side, and I'm going to put it on this first, first wire. And you can see it goes to 3.6. And I'm going to go to the next one. It should go, you can see it goes to 6.8. Go to the next one, goes to 10. The next one goes to 13.6. So as you can see, it goes up, 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 up all the way. So if these jumped, and if I put it on my first one and it went to like, uh, you know, 14 or 10 or something, then this thing's wired wrong. You want them to jump up by basically, you know, 3.5. That way you know your wiring harness is wired correctly. So before I hook it up, I'm going to take my Bluetooth mod, and this is an optional thing. Yours might not have it, but I would highly recommend these. I'm going to just put it back here, and I'm going to tape it, some caps and tapes, just to get it out of the way before I do anything else. So now I've got all my wires coming down the middle, and we'll tighten this up a little bit later. You take it, and you just put it in there. So now we're ready to power it up. So I'm going to take this nut off and we'll take this off temporarily set that aside we're going to run these wires over and then we're going to put this one back on small wires always go on top so now we're ready to test to make sure that the battery is actually a 12 volt battery to do that we're going to take our negative pro we're going to put it here which is the new negative end of the battery. The actual end is here at the end of this wire, but it's out of camera range, and this is good enough. So the negative probe goes there. Positive probe goes over here on our new negative. So we have 13.8 coming out. So our test was good. So from here, we just gotta do a few little minor finishing touches. I'm gonna take the, um, I'm gonna take the sensor. This is both hot and low temperature sensor and this is a really important thing because one of the main things that BMS does is it makes sure that the battery doesn't get too hot or too cold. So we want to just run this along here and tape it down. And then we'll take our wires, clean these up a bit. You can um, trim these too if you like. Um, I don't trim mine. Um, but if you want to do that, you can do that. I usually just take a zip tie and tie them up. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this in my power station. I already have one 200 amp hour 12 volt battery. And I'm going to add this to it. So I'm going to have over 5,000 watt hours in my portable power station. But this is pretty much it. If you built a battery, love to hear your input. Love to hear your take on it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. As always, like, share, subscribe. And look forward to uh, seeing you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching.